You are on. This is a brief video description about how to use basic features on an Animus insulin insulin pump, the One Touch Ping. Uh, the the main screen is dark. You have an up and down arrow that will either increase or decrease numbers or scroll through a series of menu options. Your OK button makes your selection happen, uh, selects your choice, makes things go. The, 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 on the very top, there's a light button that you can turn on uh, to, to brighten the screen. Your three-day supply of insulin is held in the back here. The battery is a AA battery that goes in here. And further information about the, about the insulin pump can be, uh, can be obtained by calling the 800 number on the back of the pump. To operate, to open up the pump or to wake it up, touch any button. You wake up the pump. The, pu the pump will display the time, the battery power. This little back and forth arrow means that it is linked with a meter, which is not something that we're going to be using at camp. Um, the current basal rate is 2.5 units per hour, and there's 141 units left in the, in the reservoir of the pump. The, the, the menu is highlighted. That's what you can select. So I'm going to press the OK button, and then you get to your main menu option screens. The few basic features that we're going to talk about is how to give a bolus for eating carbohydrates or when you have food for a meal or a snack, giving a bolus for a correction dose, how to check that a delivery of, of insulin was given, how to suspend and resume the operations of the pump, and how to set a temporary basal rate and cancel a, a temporary basal rate. We'll also briefly discuss where you can check for the alarms. Once your pump is awake, you press the bolus key and you have several different options. Normal bolus, it, anything that is blinking is what you can change and with the normal bolus you would have to um, use uh, a calculator to come up with the amount of insulin and you can give uh, units in whole amounts and uh, up to hundreds of units. Uh, most people use um, a, a, the Easy Carb or Easy BG. Easy Carb allows you to give a bolus dose of insulin for food that's being consumed, either at a meal or a snack. You highlight the Easy Carb, you press the OK button. The settings are already in for, for the particular individual, so all you need to tell the pump is the amount of carbs that are going to, that have been consumed. And in this example, we're going to use 25. If you go a little bit further, you can use your down arrow to toggle back to 25. Once you get the correct amount of carbs, you press the OK button. It drops down to, e to add BG. You press the OK button. You use your up, uh, um, up or down arrow to scroll up to your pre-meal blood sugar. Um, in this example, I'm going to use 153. Uh, you press Enter and it tends to show result. Um, in this example, based on this per the, the settings for this, uh, this person, you need 1.66 units for the carbohydrates that they're going to, to consume. You need 0 0.66 units for the, uh, for the blood glucose. The IOB stands for insulin on board, which is how much insulin is still uh, working from a, a previous delivered uh, bolus and you have the, the recommended amount of 2.3. It's blinking at 0, 0.00, and we're going to use the up arrow to go to the amount that is recommended. And if you go a little too far, you can back down. You get to 2.3. You press OK. It will drop to the, um, to the Go button. It gives you an opportunity to double check to make that the recommended amount is the amount that you chose. Um, for, for younger children or in a camp environment or a school environment, we usually ask them to check with a responsible adult to make sure that those numbers um, coincide because 2.3 can look a lot like 3.2. You press the go button and you'll hear a, a, a humming as the insulin is delivered and then the pump will beep at the end.
and it's all done. Um, if you are giving a, um, a, a dose of insulin for a high blood sugar outside of eating, you do the same thing. You, st you wake up the pump, you're in your menu screen, you press OK, you press OK because we want to give a bolus. You go down to easy BG, which means you're giving um, insulin just based on a high blood sugar. You press enter. Uh, you press your up arrow. And in this example, I'm going to go to 250. You press enter. It goes to your OK button. It goes to show result. You press OK to show the result. Um, in this example, uh, for the blood sugar elevation, we need 2.60 units, but it still uh, has, has some active insulin, of, insulin on board of 2.29 units, so it's only recommending um, a 0 0.3 unit uh, bolus. So we're going to follow that recommendation and go up to 0 0.30. Stop at go, double check that these two numbers, the recommended and the, the amount that you want to take, are the same, and you press the go button, and again the insulin is delivered. Now it's also important to know how to check to see what the last delivery of insulin was uh, that was given. So we're going to go to our main menu, and we're going to go down to our history menu. And there's a number of different uh, things you can check on the history, but we want to see uh, since bolus is what you're going to be doing most often, you want to see what uh, bolus was last delivered. So you press enter or the OK button. Record number one was on May 21st at 11.02, and it was a, it, it was a 0 0.3 of 0 0.3. It was completed, and it was for an easy BG. So we can tell that this was for an elevated blood sugar. If you want to go to the last record, you, you uh, from the history menu, you use your up arrow to highlight the number one because that was the last record. You press OK, that's blinking. Anything that's blinking is what, something you can change. You press your up arrow, and the second, uh, the second record was at 11 a.m., 2.3 of 2.3, and that was an easy carb. So this was a bolus that was given um, in relation to uh, food that was consumed. You can continue to go back. It will hold several hundred uh, readings. To get out of the, of the, of the uh, history menu, you, go, you press your OK button. You go down to your history menu. You press Enter. You go back down to your other, other history menu. Um, uh, and as long as we're here, let me just briefly tell you about the alarm history. You can go down and highlight the alarm and it will tell you the, la the date and time and the code and what it meant for the last alarm that was on the pump. So on May 20th at 8.01 p.m., there was a code 88-85B3, and that was to call service. We can also go up, and there was an empty cartridge on September 6th and a low cartridge on September 6th at 2.16 a.m., uh, an empty cartridge on September 3rd at 5.43 p.m. So if you, if you do get an alarm, the, 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 uh, the pump will alarm and tell you in, in real words, it will give you a code, but it will also give you in real words uh, what, the, what the problem is. And if you uh, need to uh, bring this to the attention of the medical staff, by the time you get to, um, to uh, deal with that, you can go back and look at your alarm history and figure out what the alarm was. So to empty, to, get at, to exit out of the history menu, we press enter, it goes to the history menu, enter again, and then we'll scroll down to the main menu. Um, another thing that's important to know how to use on the pump is how to stop and start the pump. Um, the pumps are smart pumps, so uh, it, it's, if, if, you, if you're in a go mode, the only option is to stop it. If you're in a stop mode, the only option is to make it go again. So we're going to scroll down from our main menu, down one to suspend resume, press the OK button. 
it is currently going, so the only option is to stop it. Um, it is giving you a reminder that if you're using an active temporary basal rate or a combination bolus, which is given over time, that those have been suspended. Uh, the pump will, will indicate that is, it was suspended um, and you're not getting any basal or bolus insulin. Uh, if you, once the pump is stopped, um, it will continue to buzz or alarm or uh, beep about every three minutes every time the pump tries to give a little bit of um, insulin delivery, and that just lets you know that um, the, the pump is not, is not doing its main feature of, of pushing insulin. For it to go from a, a suspend, you go to your main menu. It's uh, reminding us that, that we can't give any insulin because the pump is suspended. We're going to say OK. We're in our main menu. We're going to go down one to our suspend resume, um, and it will tell you the date and time that the pump was suspended. We're going to, uh, to, to restart the pump. We hit the resume button, and that, that reminder that the pump was suspended that was right here is, uh, is gone. Um, it's also important to know how to set, an, uh, set a temporary basal rate. Currently, um, this, this, uh, in this example, the person is getting 2.5 units of insulin per hour. But certain, certain activities, you may need less insulin or more insulin. Um, exercise, uh, uh, muscle that is toned use, uses insulin more efficiently than muscle that is not toned. So oftentimes during exercise, people need a lower basal rate or less insulin. You can either disconnect the pump or you can put the pump in a temporary basal rate. The numbers of how long to use the basal rate and the percentage of which to, to, to decrease the basal rate are decisions that must be um, made by the healthcare provider. I'm just showing you how to do this. You go from your main menu, you press your OK button, you go down to your basal option. Um, A1 weekday is the basal rate that is currently running, and we um, and we uh, and and that's it's in capital letters, and that's what we uh, that's what's going right now. But we want to override that with a temporary basal rate, so we're going to press temp. It drops you into change, and it's blinking at zero percent. If you needed an increased basal rate, you would use your up arrow, and it goes up in ten percent increments: ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. If you need less insulin than normal you would use your down arrow and coming from a zero percent you would go down in ten percent increments so we will do in this example we will use a minus fifty percent for two hours uh, the the uh, default is four hours but we don't want four hours so we're gonna press enter and we're gonna go down it goes down in half an hour increments to two, you can do this anywhere from half an hour to 12 hours. Uh, so you can, you can, we're going to do two hours, so we go up to two hours. Um, it stops at go, gives you a chance to review that you want a minus 50% correct um, basal rate for two hours. You press enter. And it just reminds you that there's a minimum a limited rate. Um, and when you go to your main menu, it will say that there's a temp basal of minus 50 for 50% 50 for two hours, and that there's still two hours uh, left in the in the in the in this temporary basal rate. The convenient thing about a temporary basal rate is this will this two hour time frame will continue to uh, go down, and at the end of that two hours, it will kick back into your regular normal usual amount of basal rate. Um, if you have set a temporary basal rate for some anticipated exercise, but you end up not doing that, you can go ahead and cancel a basal rate. You go down to your basal option, press enter. Um, temp basal is in capitals because that's what's, that's what's running right now. You're going to press enter. And you'll see that one, uh, one line above the main menu is cancel. So you will use your up arrow to go to cancel. And then that, that reminder that the basal rate was option was, was operating is no longer there. So you're at your usual 2.5 units per hour. Um, this ends the, uh, the 
brief explanation about a couple of uh, basal, basal rate adjustments and, uh, and pump button features that you can use on the Animus ping. Any other further uh, discussion about the pumps and settings and rates uh, should come from your healthcare provider. Thanks very much.